What if I told you that there was a list of 12 things that if you did them every day, promise to change your life? And now I mean change your life for the better. We could have 12 different types of ice cream, but it won't change our life in a good way. Imagine just having a list of things to do that will automatically make you feel healthier and more vibrant and give you more energy. Would you do it? Well, believe it or not, there is a list that promises to do just that and it is called The Daily Dozen. The Daily Dozen is an app created by the team at nutritionfacts.org and Dr. Michael Greger. If you have seen any plant-based channels on YouTube, you are probably familiar with Dr. Greger. He is the author of How Not to Die, How Not to Diet, and the cookbooks for both of those publications. He is also behind nutritionfacts.org and its YouTube channel, a wildly helpful source of plant-based nutrition information. While those resources are all great, they can be really overwhelming with the amount of information they provide. So Dr. Greger and his team put together an app called The Daily Dozen. The Daily Dozen is a list of foods and activities to do every day that promises to improve your health and wellness if you follow them. The list was created based on the research done by the nutritionfacts.org team. So here's the thing about me. I love feeling good. And if there's something out there that promises to make me feel even better, well, I'm going to try it. So I decided to do the Daily Dozen every day for 60 days. I checked off every box on the app for two months straight. I did this because I wanted to see if this app actually lived up to the hype. And even though it's free, I wanted to see if it was something that you should invest your time, energy, and grocery money into. Hi, I'm Peter, I'm a plant-based nutrition coach, and today we are talking about what happened to me after 60 days on The Daily Dozen. But first, what is The Daily Dozen? The Daily Dozen requires you to eat three servings of beans, one serving of berries, three servings of other fruits, one serving of cruciferous vegetables, think broccoli, cabbage, bok choy, two servings of greens, two servings of other vegetables, one serving of flax seeds, one serving of nuts, three servings of whole grains, one serving of spices, five beverages, water or tea, one session of exercise for 40 to 90 minutes, depending on intensity, and make sure you get your vitamin B12. That's a lot, right? Like when I started this, I felt overwhelmed with how much I had to eat, and I had no idea how I was actually going to accomplish this challenge every day. But armed with this knowledge, I headed to Wegmans, I loaded up my grocery cart, and I set out to complete this challenge. So, what happened? How did I feel after doing this for 60 days? Did my energy levels improve? Did my health improve? Was I able to actually fit all of this food in? Do I still follow this plan? Well, after 60 days on the Daily Dozen, here are my biggest takeaways. So my first takeaway from the Daily Dozen challenge was that I became more creative in the kitchen. Immediately I was buying more food, but not necessarily more expensive food. When you buy whole foods, they tend to be pretty cheap, especially with produce. And because I was eating so many whole foods, I didn't have the stomach capacity to buy a bunch of snacks. So the grocery bill stayed even, maybe it went up a little bit. The challenge though was trying to implement all these foods by putting them on my plate. Some of these were really tough, like how was I going to get three servings of beans a day? Or what even is a cruciferous vegetable? Plus, how could I have a cruciferous vegetable plus other vegetables plus greens? It, it was a lot. But after a week or two, I started to get into a rhythm and get more creative. I would top my food with nuts and seeds. I would cook up different types of veggies and load them onto a plate to get most of my servings in one meal. I would top my food with avocado or throw some extra carrots on the side. Basically, when I opened my pantry and fridge, I wasn't just grabbing the first thing I saw, I was being more strategic. I was looking at how I could incorporate different foods into my meals. Over time, this led to more creativity and hitting the goals became pretty easy. Although there were times where I just straight up had to have raw broccoli with my nightly cereal, which is not a great combo, but all in the name of health, I guess, right? The toughest part came when I had to travel. Whether it was a day trip to my friends upstate or a weekend at my parents, I had to reckon with the fact that not everyone keeps cruciferous vegetables in their fridge or has a supply of mixed nuts or has flax seeds for me to put in my oatmeal. The nerve. 
right? But to get around this, I created some snacks that I could bring with me. And then when I got to the place, I would just say I had food I didn't want to waste to take out any awkwardness. The second big takeaway here was that my relationship with food changed. Because I was buying a lot more food, I was also eating a lot more food. But that food was very nutritionally dense and low calorie. One of the best things I noticed was that I was never super hungry. I see so many YouTube videos where people try a plant-based or vegan diet and they complain about how hungry they are. But if all they're eating is salad, of course they're gonna be hungry. Here though, there were so many whole grains and beans and vegetables that it worked really well for me because I never got super hungry. I was always pretty full and my energy levels were stable. To be honest, I got to a point where I wanted to get as many nutrients as possible. I did not wanna waste a meal or a snack on Oreos or chips because I knew I could be accomplishing part of the daily dozen instead of having those calories. Now, I see food as fuel and enjoyment. So I'm not just eating for pleasure, I'm eating for pleasure and nutrition because I was able to make these meals taste great. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to make a plant-based meal that is nutritious, delicious, quick and easy, I did make a guide with a seven-step system for how I cooked my meals on the Daily Dozen Challenge. The link for that is in the description. It's totally free, make sure to get a copy. My third takeaway is that my body changed. Overall, during this time, my workouts and athletic performance did improve. More high quality carbohydrates, like from whole grains and berries, aided in my recovery from my difficult workouts. And the protein from all the beans and whole grains probably assisted in that as well. While I also improved my athletic performance, I lost body fat. This wasn't something I was even planning on doing, to be honest, but it was a natural result. There was a point where after about a month or a little more, I looked in the mirror and noticed that my face was slimmer and that my abs were more defined. And I was like, cool. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even know I had the body fat to lose, but the fact that that happened was a really nice bonus. I'm pretty sure it's because I wasn't snacking as much on the chips that you just saw me snacking on. Finally, I had sustained energy all throughout the day. I'm very prone to blood sugar crashes, and that's one of the reasons I switched to a plant-based diet in the first place. But on the Daily Dozen, I had pretty consistent energy. Now, I wasn't feeling amazing all the time or like I could run a marathon at five in the morning, but I never got like huge crashes, right? I was never on my desk falling asleep after lunch. Sure, I was tired after a long day of work or in the mid afternoon, but I didn't feel the need to like plop on the couch and take a nap. And finally, I don't follow the Daily Dozen every day anymore. Eventually for me personally, when I have boxes to check, it becomes less enjoyable and becomes a source of anxiety. I need to check off the boxes and I get really hard on myself if I'm not completing the challenge. So I still hit most of the points every day, but I don't use the app and I don't agonize if I don't hit everything every day. At this point, the list is internalized for me and I kind of know what I need to eat. I make sure that I have servings of each of the categories in my kitchen at all times though. So when I'm putting together my plant-based meals, Again, grab the guide below. I at least have all the categories to choose from and I'm used to adding things onto these meals to optimize my nutrition. Eventually, in my opinion, getting connected to an app can hinder progress because we're focused more on the app and the boxes and less about just intuitively eating a healthy, nutritious diet. Since this challenge, the Daily Dozen has become embedded in my psyche. I'm just constantly thinking about what I should be eating, what I wanna add to my plate, and making sure I get those cruciferous vegetables every day. Now my goal isn't to check the boxes, it's to live an active, healthy, plant-based lifestyle so my nutrition doesn't end when the last bite leaves my fork. Instead, I use this food to go out and live my life and be active and explore and be fit. Because that's the point of healthy eating in the end, right? To feel good and to live our life. And that is a far more sustainable way to eat. So overall, the Daily Dozen app is definitely worth trying in my opinion. It's a great way to find out the foods you should be eating to improve your overall nutrition. It's free and it's a fun challenge. You could try it for one day, for seven days, a month, or even 60 days like me. 
One of the issues though is it offers types of foods, but not meals. So you could pick up Dr. Greger's How Not to Die cookbook, which I have and would recommend, or you can grab my free guide below with my seven step process to creating a delicious plant-based meal. That's the literal strategy I used to make almost all of my meals while completing this challenge. And it gives you a framework to work with but it's also loose and flexible enough for you to get creative. And remember, every body is different, so you may not get the same results as me. This is just my experience and thoughts on the app. If you are interested though in what works best for your body, you may want to work with me as your plant-based nutrition coach. As a nutrition coach, I give you the education, support, guidance, and accountability you need to hit your plant-based nutrition goals. Whether you're looking to lose weight, build muscle, or let's be honest, just eat more vegetables, I will help you create systems and habits that make reaching those plant-based goals automatic for you. If you're interested in working with me as your plant-based nutrition coach, I currently have a waitlist form that is in the description. Click that, sign up for the waitlist. You'll be the first person to know as soon as I start enrolling new clients. All right, that's my experience with The Daily Dozen. What do you think? Have you tried it? Let us know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and we'll talk soon.